All right, so now to dynamic NAT. Dynamic NAT will do a many-to-many -many mapping. So uh, in our case, we have a bunch of these uh, computers on VLAN 1, and we're going to map them to a couple different IPs on the outside. Okay, so I have a couple IPs left on this interface. So I have 172.16.0.1 and 172.16.0.2, but I have a 248 subnet mask, so I have a block size of 8. So I'm going to use the remaining 6 addresses, uh, or I take it back, I have remaining uh, 4 addresses, because I've used 2. Uh, so I'm going to use those uh, in my many-to-many uh, -many mapping. So what I'll find is uh, I'm going to... It's a first comes first serve basis uh, to get those IPs, and then once those IPs run out, uh, you know my guys are out of out of luck. So we'll go ahead and apply it. This is our outside. This is our inside. So when we apply it, uh, we'll do a show IP interface brief. This is my outside fast ether zero zero. This is my inside, which is the sub interface. Okay, so we'll do a config t interface fa zero zero ip nat outside. All right, and then uh, uh, exit interface fa zero slash one decimal one ip nat. Uh, we'll do this as inside, and then I'm going to apply an access list to this one. So we'll do access. Uh, IP access group one in okay so when I create access uh, list one uh, that's going to basically be uh, selecting that VLAN one traffic alright so exit so interface or no how about access list one permit now here I'm going to select my addresses to match. So 192.168.0.0. .0 .0. How about 0 0.0.0.255? It's a full class C that I've created. Hit enter. All right, so I've created my access list one. So we'll do a exit show run. I've been having problems with uh, uh, Packet Tracer actually applying some of the commands, so we'll just check them as we go. So we've applied IP NAT inside to our sub interface. We've applied our access group one in on that sub interface as well. And that access list one grabs all of our VLAN one traffic, okay? All of these addresses basically, okay? So now if I bring this down, do a ping. Gonna ping the other side's loopback to so 10.0.0.1. So I shouldn't get anything through. What I'm looking to see is if I do a show access list, I'm getting matches. So my access list is being applied, which is good. Okay, so now let's actually create the NAT side of it. So config T. Okay, first off. We've defined our addresses on the inside. Now we need to define those addresses on the outside. And we're going to do that through a pool. So IP NAT. Now we have these pool of addresses. Pool. We're going to give it a name. And now the start IP address. So we've already used uh, 172.16.0.1 and 0 0.2 for my two routers. Now I've got uh, 0 0.3, so 172.16.0.3, and then the end IP address. So this is a block size of 8, so the uh, broadcast address is going to be .7, so my last available is .6, so 172.16.0.6. Net mask, 255, 255, 255, and it's a 248 out there. Okay. So now we've defined the ins our inside addresses. We did that with an access list. Now we've defined our outside addresses, which we're doing with the uh, the NAT pool. So now let's put it all together. So IP NAT, we'll do it inside because I'm going to apply it from the inside out. Uh, source, in our case, we're going to do a list here because we built an access list to select that local address. So list one. Now, for the global addresses, we did a pool. 
we called it data and we have overload here which we'll apply in our next section but here we're just going to apply it here because we're only going to do dynamic NAT okay so we'll do an end show run come back up here so we have our NAT pool that selects our outside addresses okay or in this case it's our inside global addresses okay we have an access list that selects our inside local addresses and then our actual NAT statement takes those inside uh, inside lists that we built and applies it to the uh, outside or the inside global addresses if you will okay so hopefully everything's working now and what we should see if we bring up this router bring it down here we'll do a enable debug uh, IP ICMP okay so we want to see which IPs are coming in I'll do from down here I'm going to do a ping 10.0.0.1 and hopefully if everything works right okay so here we go we're getting uh, packets in and we're sending them back destination 172.16.0.3 so it used that first available IP address okay so if I go to my next one and I do a ping 172.16 dot zero dot or let's do it ten dot zero dot zero dot one so it should go out and what we should see is okay we started out with uh, zero dot three now we're up to zero dot four okay now I could go down the line but by the time I get down here some of the translations will expire and so I'll just start over with three what I want to do instead is make sure it maxes out so I'm gonna do I'm going to add a PDU here. So I'm going to set, take it to destination 10.0.0.1. Just going to give it a sequence number. Bring it up here so you can see the rest. I'm going to do periodic every two seconds. So every two seconds it's going to ping 10.0.0.1. Alright. And I'm just going to define these for all of them. 10.0.0.1. One periodic every two seconds. The reason I'm doing this is I want consistent traffic because I want to make sure that we use every available uh, NAT translation that we have. Because if you remember, uh, we only had four addresses to choose from. We had uh, 172.16.0.0.3 all the way up to. Uh, six but we have more than four hosts here um, so what we should see is that eventually uh, we're gonna run into problems so I should have four of them going out if I bring this up so we're seeing three four uh, I saw a five in there a six so we're seeing lots of traffic oops lots of translations there so if I do a show IP NAT translation I got a full table here okay and so I'm mapping I've got five I've got four I've got six and I've got three so I'm maxed out now on my addresses and so that's the way that dynamic NAT you know works you know the first guy to go up there and request to use NAT he's the one that that, that gets to use the IP you know but once we run out now we should find 10.0.0.1 shouldn't work because there are no IPs left to NAT to because we only again defined that uh, that group of four. So the only way to get rid of it, I've deleted now uh, my uh, PDUs that I was sending out on each of these computers. So as we go these should start expiring because that the, the NAT uh, NAT only lasts for so long right so to IP NAT translation so our list should be slightly smaller we have still have maps to five we still have map to four six three 
if I give it a little bit longer, show IP NAT translation. I've got fives, I've got fours, I've got sixes, I've still got some threes. But eventually, if enough of them time out and they open up some available translation space, is this guy will snag up uh, one of the IPs and eventually, there it goes. So enough translations expired uh, so that one of the IP address rain, or one of the IP addresses, you know, became available, and he started pinging out. Uh, and so we should be able to come up here, and it looks like six expired first, and so he was able to use six. Okay, so that's dynamic NAT. You can you can define a range of of uh, uh, global IPs that you want to use, and you can define a range of inside local IPs that you want to use, and map it that way. But remember. If you have more people trying to use those IPs than you have IPs available, eventually you're going to hit a point where certain people aren't going to have access. Okay, And that's where uh, we roll into dynamic NAT with overload.